Amen. It's 11 o'clock. Time to begin service. Let's stand. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's give him praise and glory and honor. Oh, we came to have church, God. We came to just thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, God. We love you. We give you the praise and the gratitude. Lord, it all belongs to you, Lord. God, we're thankful for your precious blood. We're thankful for the assembly of the saints. God, we're looking for you to move in a very special way, God. We're looking, Lord, for you to cast out sickness in the lives of your people, Lord. For you to destroy every work of the devil, Lord. Today, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, because you're faithful and you're worthy, oh, Lord. The praise, Lord, and honor in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Let's get excited, amen, about what God is doing. Amen. Sister Eric, she's going to sing a lead us in hymns. Let's go ahead. Let's pray for the Lord. Oh, my God. Amen. I'm pressing on.
concerning you and everything, give thanks to him. No matter how you feel, give thanks to him. No matter what it looks like around you, give thanks to him. No matter what you're going through, give him thanks, give him praise. Oh, he inhabits the praises of his saints. How, how do you defeat a battle? You just thank your way through it. You just praise your way through it. You just read your way through it. You just pray your way through it. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, I don't care what's going on in my life, God. I can give you thanks, Lord. I can thank you, Lord, that you got a roof over my head. My house is still, is still standing, amen. Oh, God, I'm thankful, Lord. There's no sickness in my body, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord, that you have food on my table, Lord. I'm thankful, Lord, that you put me in the right frame of mind. You brought me to your house to praise you. Oh, God, we love you. We give you the glory that belongs to you. We keep praising you. I wait on me to gas you up. Don't you got something to thank God about? Amen. Amen. Aren't you thankful that you're in the house of God Amen. this morning? Amen. Amen. Oh, we love you. We give you the praise and honor. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a clap off. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good. It's time you may be seated. I'd like to welcome each one to God's house this morning. I'm looking forward to what God has in store yes, for us. Yes. yes. You just can't outdo God. Amen. That's true. No matter how hard you try, God always is a step ahead. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. Steps ahead. Yes, he is. Amen. Amen. God is good. And we're going to give you an opportunity. Oh, Amen. We're going to wait on you for the Thursday. Oh, uh, correction, not Thursday. My days are not off. We're going to wait on you for the Sunday morning time to offering. Yes. We can't outdo God, neither can we outgive Him. How many know that? Amen. Amen. We'll give you an opportunity to wait, uh, we'll wait on you for the Sunday morning tithe and offering. Our Christians pay tithe, cheerfully give, and the offering as unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask Sister Everett, ma'am, if you'll pray for the gift and the giver, please. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to be
folks that ask me, what are we going to have church? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. As long as Walmart is still open and yeah. transit is still running. Yeah. I don't see why we can't have church. Come on, man. Well, Pardon preacher, me. what about the smoking smoke at home? Yeah. <laughs> you might as well come to church and instead of being defeated and thinking about what's going to do and gloom, you might as well come to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Smoke at home and smoke at here, you can't get away from it. <laughs> Hey man, might as well come to church. Let's get something from God. Let's get in where we fit in. Let's see what God has in store for us this morning. I want to turn your attention to the book of Judges, the sixth book of the Bible, after the Pentateuch, after the five books, after the book of Joshua, after the book of Judges, Judges, book of Judges, chapter six. Book of Judges, chapter 6, beginning at verse 11. Well, with us, folks, we were supposed to get our speaker back. It's in the repair shop. It should be back early next week. I guess the shipment, uh, the amp blew out on the thing. Mm -hmm. blew, the, blew the amp out on the thing. <laughs> so we appreciate your gift and your giving, hey, man. I was able to yeah. take care of it. I think it was like $360. No big deal, right? Yeah. How much one cost brand new? Six hundred, five hundred fifty dollars. Okay. Amen. Yeah. They some pretty powerful speakers, but yeah. God knows. God knows it's in the yeah. shop now. Should be ready next week. Ready to blow the roof off next <laughs> week. Amen. Ready to blow the roof off the place. Yes. No, I ain't like y'all. Now I like your music loud. <laughs> Like you preaching loud, right? Come on. Like your TV loud. Come on. You want to hear it. Amen. That's right. The book of Judges, chapter 6, beginning at verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. And said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all of this befallen us? Come on now. Yeah, and and what be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? Come on. Saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Mm -hmm. But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go, and this might, and this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Oh, come on. Come on now. And he said unto him, O oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Come on now. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Amen. Well, he's verse 14, or text verse. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Help of the Lord, Holy Ghost, and your help. We want to preach on a message entitled, God is still calling. Oh, yes. God yes. is still yes. calling. Sister Everett, man, if you'll pray for the message messenger, those who are listening this morning. Gracious Lord, we come to you again with thanksgiving, oh God. We appreciate all that you've done and how you've kept us in this year. We are asking today, Lord, that you would move mightily by your Holy Ghost. Lord, allow preaching to be made easy for Pastor God. Allow grace to rest upon him, Lord, that he may utter the words from your heart. And we're asking that you would help each and every person that is listening and that will listen, oh God, to have tender hearts that your seed may fall upon good ground. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is still calling. Gideon, he's a man that seemingly lived in obscurity. During the time God called him, he was hiding from the enemy, threshing wheat. He's a fellow that is living in a time where there was no king in Israel. There was no one leading the nation. The Bible says the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so the Lord delivered them in the hand of Midian seven years. When you do evil, God 
All the blessings of God are not are no longer on your life. Amen. See, it wasn't God that forsook them. Right. It was them Come forsake on. God. Come forsaking on. God. Had forsaken God. Many or distant relatives of Israel. They came about doing Abraham and his concubine couture, their relationship. They had a child. Right. And so many and were distant relatives. Now, I don't know about you, but all your relatives, you don't get along with, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and so they didn't really get along with the Midianites. The Israelites didn't get along with the Midianites. But they, or so they oppressed. So they were oppressed by their enemies. They were oppressed so bad that some of the Israelites, some of the Jews, they were hiding in the caves. How many of y'all ever hid from your problems? Amen. They were greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. The Bible says the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They were impoverished. The Midianites would come through when the crops were ready, and they would just and uh, would uh, sack the crop, or uh, the crops, so to speak, would sack the crops, take everything they had. The, the Bible says they were impoverished. The word impoverished means they were brought low. Mm -hmm. They were brought low. They were brought to the point where some of them began to cry out. Some began to cry to the Lord. Have you ever been to that point where you had so many problems, so many circumstances bombarding you, amen, you finally decided to be humble yourself. You had that come to Jesus moment, so to speak, amen, and you finally started to cry out to the Lord and call for help, amen. When they began to cry out to the Lord, God sent them help. See, God was calling. God is still calling people about. God is still calling people about. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an offering. And that pertained unto Joaz, the Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. God was looking for a man that would seek him, amen. God was looking for somebody, not just anybody. He wasn't looking for just anybody. God ain't looking for just anybody today. God is looking for somebody that has valor, amen. Yeah. Somebody, amen, that has courage, amen. Yeah. Somebody that will, will surrender, amen. Somebody that will defy the odds, amen, of the government, if you will, amen. Yeah. Regardless of what the government tells you, amen, or so-and-so tells you, amen, it's, good, it's better for people people, amen, to obey God than man, amen, and so, uh, uh, and so Gideon, he was allowing the enemies, amen, to stop him from eating, amen, he began to get a little, a little place, if you will, amen, a little hiding place, amen, and he began to work, amen, he began to press, amen, he began to, uh, uh, to thresh that wheat, amen, to thresh, just to separate the wheat from the chaff. It was a wine press. It was someone that the enemies would not detect him at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You press wine at the wine press. Yeah. <laughs> you would press the grapes, squeeze the grapes, the squeeze the liquid out of the grapes at the wine press. They would never detect him mm. being there. Mm. And so he went to an obscure place, a place to work, to provide for his family. You know, if a man can't provide for his family, the Bible says he's worse, worse than the infidel. Yeah. And I believe. Yeah. Gideon wasn't going to let the enemy stop him from eating. Come on. Yes, sir. Gideon wasn't going to let the enemy stop his family from eating. Come on. Nope. Gideon was working, not laying up. Come on. Come on. There you go. In the bed at 12 to 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you need to be out there working. Amen. Amen. Gideon was working. The word mighty means giant. The word valor, it denotes strength, mm. ability. Some of the greatest people in the Bible were those who simply took God at his word. Amen. Oh, yeah. You don't have to be a rocket science, say, uh, scientist, amen, to be a mighty man or woman of valor. Right. You just need to be somebody that will just simply take God at his word. Amen. Mighty men of valor in the eyes of God are those who believe that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Yeah. Gideon is listed in the faith of in the, in the hall of faith. 
In the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 here, it says, And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Pharaoh and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms. Then give me the scripture reference because I don't want you paying attention to that right now. <laughs> then give me the scripture reference. It's Hebrews 11. Read it later. <laughs> Sam, listen, folks. It was through faith that people subdued kingdoms. Kingdoms, amen. Subdue kingdoms. It was through faith that people overcame kingdoms, amen. It was through faith that people wrought righteousness, amen. It was through faith that people obtained promises, amen. It was through faith that men and women, amen, stopped the mouths of lions, amen. It's through faith, brothers and sisters, that we will always subdue the kingdom, amen. I'm thankful today, amen, that Jesus has called Christians out of the world, amen. Not in the world. He's called us out of the world. Not to be like the world, but to be a to the world. Yeah. He's calling men and women of valor. Men and women of courage. Amen. We're not trying to blend in with the world. Amen. The Bible says come out from the world. Amen. The church. Amen. It's the call. That was, that's what the word means. Amen. God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. I'm thankful today. Amen. I'm not what I used to be. Amen. I'm a child of the living God. Oh, thank you to God. Now that's people. Amen. Men and women of valor today. Quench the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned the flight of the armies of, uh, of the aliens, amen. This is how, folks, we're going uh, 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 to defeat our enemies, amen. It's going to be through faith, amen. We're going to work righteousness, amen. It's going to be through faith, amen. We're going to attain the promises of God, amen. It's going to be through faith that we stop the mouth of the lion. What mouth, amen. It's going to be through faith we stop the mouth of the devil, amen. Then your adversary, the devil, goes about as a wrong line, seeking who we Make the flood the bow. I'm thankful today, amen. If I submit to God and resist the devil, he said, you'll see. Yeah. 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 The reason, amen, the battles don't stop, amen, is because the Christian, amen, or the sinner, amen, have not conformed to the will of God, amen. They are going about establishing their own righteousness without submitting to the righteousness of God. All you got to do is say, oh God, I'll yield to you today, amen. All you got to do is say, God, I'll surrender this thing to you today, amen. All you got to do, amen, is press through the crowd today, amen, and get the blessing of God for yourself today. It shows us why God can use some mm -hmm. and why he can't use others. Come on now. Oh. <laughs> the same faith that's available for me or whoever, amen, that's serving God is available for the unbeliever. Amen. Mm. How come God looked for this man mm. and not others? Mm -hmm. You have to believe that God is who he says he is. Yes. It is impossible for God to lie. That's what the Bible tells us. The Bible lets us know that God is immutable without changing. Come on. Though he changes the seasons, God never changes. Yes. Though he changes the seasons, amen, God never changes, amen. And so, folks, you got to understand, amen, that without faith, amen, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. But aren't you yeah. thankful today, amen, if you get the word of God, what belongs in your heart, amen, not on your coffee table, amen, not on your, not on the first city of God, the word of God belongs in your heart today. If we get the word of God in our hearts, amen, we can increase in faith, amen. amen. The Bible lets us know. The Bible tells us, amen, without faith, amen, it's impossible to please God. The Bible also lets us know how to get faith, amen. We need the word of God. We need to feed our faith today, amen. amen. Not to feed your faith today. Feed your spiritual appetite today. Crave, uh, crave the word of God, amen. amen. Be thirsty for the word of God. Be like a deer, amen. That pen about the word of birth, amen. amen. Be thirsty for the word of God today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Bible lets us know those that are hungry, the hungry and thirst after the word of uh, uh, not the righteousness will be filled. Amen. That we hunger and thirst, amen. That we receive the bread of life, amen. The bread of life ain't that manna, amen. The bread of life, amen, is really Jesus, amen. When we digest his words, amen. When we receive his words, amen, we'll get bigger, amen. We'll get better in God, amen. We'll get stronger in God, amen. We'll be able to defeat our adversaries today. The oppression was so bad. Mm. The Gideon threshed wheat mm. by the wine press mm -hmm. to hide it from the enemy. So thresh is to beat out. So you got to get rid of that, that trash in your life. Yeah, that's oh. it. 
I got to get rid of that trash that's in my life. Yes. We have to thresh. How do you thresh? The Bible tells us how to thresh spiritually, amen. John the Baptist said, Jesus indeed, I indeed baptize you with water. But there comes one mightier than I, amen, who yes. shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost yes. and with fire, amen. As you begin to pray as a Christian, amen. As you begin to seek God as a Christian, amen. As you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost as a Christian, amen. The Holy Ghost will burn chap out of your life. Things that are useless in your life. And he'll, pray, he'll bring the wheat to the gardener, amen. amen. He'll bring the wheat to the barn house, amen. amen. He'll bring that thing which is good, amen. That character, amen. He'll shape and mold you, amen. He'll make you look more like Jesus. He'll make you look more like a Christian. Amen. You'll grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Folks, we need to get better. Yeah. I was talking about it last night. During our class, sanctification is a progressive work, amen. Every day we should get better, amen. You're not perfect in one fell swoop. Every day, day by day, yeah. you should get better, amen. Not get worse, amen. Not go back, amen. Not do less than you did before, amen. We should keep pressing, amen. We should get stronger, amen. We should keep running this Christian race, amen. With everything that's within us today. We got to keep running this Christian race. There's no, hey, there's no back. God don't have anything, amen, for your back to regard spiritual armor. Come on. Come because on. God never intended for you to run off from the end. Come on. When you look at Paul's as description of spiritual armor in Ephesians 6, there's nothing for the back. Oh. Right. We're not of them that draw back. That's what he said. Got our back. In Hebrews, <laughs> we're not of them who draw back. We're not going back, going back to the world for what? Oh. We're charging for it. We got the defense we need. We got the helmet of salvation, amen. We got the breastplate of righteousness, amen. We got our Lord's girl about with truth, amen. We got our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel, amen. That's the defense, amen. Then we got the offense, amen. We're ready to attack, amen. What's the offense? The sword of the Lord, amen. I'm attacking the devil with the word of God. I'm attacking my problems with the word of God. I'm attacking those things that are against me with the word of God. Come on. Praise God. We need the word of God. That's right. Gideon was doing this by the wine press because the enemy would not suspect him to be there. They had already took in the grapes and the crops. Mm -hmm. God is looking for men and women of courage in Portland, Oregon. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Not gripes. Not complainers. Come on. Not Debbie Dallas. Come on. God is looking for people of courage. Yes. People who are going to fight. That's right. People who are going to witness. Yeah. People who are going to love people, amen. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. God is looking for people mm-hmm. who love him, yeah. who will serve him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To love him is to obey him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To obey him is to love him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bible tells us, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those them whose heart is perfect, Towards him. Come on. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. God is searching right now. Mm-hmm. He wants to show himself strong in somebody's yeah. life yeah. who's perfect yeah. towards him. Not without fault, but with co- who's complete, amen. Who's complete in him. Who's trusting him with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind. He's looking, amen, to show himself strong in your life. Not to show himself weak in your life. God wants to get bigger in your life. He wants to get bigger in my life, amen. God wants to show himself stronger in your life today. Get in and say this, God. Because God wanted to show himself strong in Gideon's life. Mm-hmm. He said, look, God, my family, you know, we're the poorest folks out here. Mm-hmm. Besides mm-hmm. all that, mm-hmm. I'm the least in my father's house. I'm the mm-hmm. black sheep, mm-hmm. the youngest. I'm the servant boy. <laughs> I'm the gopher. Go for this, go for that. Yeah. I'll be the remote right there. You lazy? Get up, get it. Come on. I'll tell you this story later on. Back by and by. God knows how much your family is worth. Yes. He's still calling whosoever mm-hmm. has courage to trust his son. Amen. He knows how much you got. Yeah. Knows your abilities. Knows what you can't do. Yeah. But he knows what you can do. Mm-hmm. He wants to show himself strong in your life. Amen. The Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of, there was a lot of troops out there. Oh. Yeah. Well, 185,000, I believe. I don't know. It's about 180 some thousand. And he's telling Gideon, mm-hmm. you'll smite them as if they're only one man. He's still calling the people to the oak tree. 
Gideon wanted to see a sign. God, give me a sign. Right. Sometimes you need God to confirm his word. God, show me, God. Yeah, this is, yeah. he, wasn't, it, it wasn't being, he wasn't being malicious or what have you, but he really wanted to know, is this what God wants? God, are you sure? Is this what you want? Remember, they didn't have the Bible. There was a press. They didn't have the words of God. You got the word of God. You got all the signs you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these folks was oppressed. They didn't have the word of God available like that. Huh. This was a time when people was doing evil in the sight of the Lord. In uh, another place in Judges, they, uh, uh, the people, the Bible says there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Yeah. Didn't say every man did that which was sinful in his own eyes. He said rather it was a time when people decided to do right. Huh. But see, this is the problem though, folks. Somebody has to decide what's right. Yeah. Somebody has to decide. Now, it seems to me that all good people go, go to heaven. Well, if all good, good people go to heaven, ain't nobody going to heaven. Because God, by his grace, God, God thought all men were bad anyway. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if all, all good people go to heaven, there ain't going to be nobody in heaven. <laughs> and so God, by his grace, sent his son, amen, amen, to take our place, amen. He sent his son to go to the old tree, amen. He sent his son, amen, to work righteousness in our lives, amen. He sent his son, amen, to show us what right looks like. Yes, yes, yes. He sent his son. Mm -hmm. He said, if I have found grace in your sight, show me that this is your will. Mm -hmm. Don't leave until I bring my present to you. He went out trying to get, he was trying to give God something too. Yeah, yeah. See, when you serve God and you love God, you want to give him something. Yeah, yeah. You want to give him an offering. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not just talking about finance, I'm talking about a life. Oh, come on. We were talking about that last night, right? Ladies, the sanctification, how right. your, your life is not set aside for God. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Your life don't belong to you anymore if you say you're a Christian. Amen. There you go. You're brought for the price, all right? Yeah. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Yeah. We're supposed yeah. to glorify God in our body and the way we live mm -hmm. and what we do. And so Gideon went in and made ready a kid. What's a kid? He got his child ready? No. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about he got a, a kid, a goat, a she-goat. He made ready and got a she-goat and 11 cakes of ephah flour. That's barley of those. Then the flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out under an oak and presented it. He prepared an oak. He prepared a sacrifice. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the eleven cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the eleven cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the eleven cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. So you have to realize, amen, we're going to bring a couple things out. We're going to go to point three and we're going to shut it down and start praying. A couple things real quick, folks. The angel of the Lord. Many writers say this was the second person of God here, Jesus. Hmm. Jesus' name was obscure. Know about Jesus at the time because God had not used Mary to bring Jesus into the world. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord is the second person in the Godhead, mm -hmm. in the divine trinity. Mm -hmm. So this person, the angel means messenger, angel's messenger. Mm -hmm. This messenger of the Lord was the second person in the Godhead. Mm -hmm. He tells Gideon to take this and put it on the rock. Now, God told Peter, Peter, hey, I'll build my, I'm going to build my church on this rock. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail, amen. Except the Lord build of the house. They that labor, labor if in vain, amen. If we build our lives on the rock, amen, and we go to the old tree, amen, of Calvary, and we put that old sin, amen, that bad attitude under the oak tree, amen, if we bury what we need to bury under the oak tree, amen, and begin to present our bodies a living sacrifice, amen, he gave what he needed to give to God, amen. We get to present that thing to God, amen. And then God consumed it by fire, amen. I remember, amen, when I got saved, amen. I began to uh, bury my life, if you will, under the oak tree, amen. Then God consumed that thing by fire, amen. I wasn't the same person I was, amen, when I came in that church, amen. I began to weep, snots, and boogers, so to speak, crying my heart out before God. Folks thought I was crazy, but they didn't realize, brothers and sisters, I just walked out of that thing and I had got hope. I got what I needed. From God. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the angel of the Lord commanded him to 
to lay the meat and the leavened cakes upon the, this rock and pour out the broth. You need to pour out everything, amen. Pour out all the liquid, amen. Pour out, pour out all the liquid courage, amen. Pour out all the, the spirit off, amen. Pour out all the malt liquor, amen. Pour out all the Coke 45, amen. Pour it all out, amen. Pour it all to let God consume it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta pull it all out. Yeah. Gotta pull that life all the way out, amen. We gotta bury it under the oak tree, amen. How many want to go to Calvary today, amen? If you go to Calvary today, you will walk out the same, amen. If you really meet Jesus today, you allow Jesus, amen, to touch you in this service. Allow the angel of the Lord, the messenger of the Lord, to touch you, amen. Allow him to consume the offering on the, on, the, on the altar, amen. Allow him to consume your life on the altar, amen. I guarantee you this, God will work peace in your life. That's right. Yeah. What's our tree today? What's our oak tree? The tree of Calvary. For the preaching of the cross to them that air is foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. People think you're crazy, amen, because you're talking about some 2,000-year-old dead God. They don't even know. Jesus ain't here. He's risen, amen. I said he's risen, amen. I said God, he's alive today. God is still calling the sinners to the cross. There's something about the magnetic, the magnetic love of Almighty God. I like what Jesus told him. He said, I, he said this, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men near. He said, this signifies the death he'll die, amen. He said, if I go to the Calvary, amen. If I go to Calvary, amen. If I submit myself to God, amen. He's going to victory in my life. Yes. Well, as much. Yeah, and all the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He also likewise took, the, took, took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, folks, he not heaven wasn't open up for business, amen. As you recall in Luke chapter 16, all the Old Testament saints, the Bible lets us know, when to Abraham's bosom, amen, that was the lower compartment of the earth, amen. The one that took Christ went down to hell, amen. Spent those three days and three nights, they had captivity captive, came back with all power in heaven and earth. It's victory in Jesus, amen. I'm saying heaven is open up for business. Yeah. Their death has no hold on me, amen. Death has no sting over my life, amen. The sting of death is sin, amen. Sin has no power over my life. The Bible says, whosoever is born of God, sin if not, that wicked one touching him not. Oh, thanks be unto God. Jesus Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Come on, come on. Praise God. Praise God. Before God has highly exalted him, give him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth that's in hell. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's look at Jesus real quick. That word Jesus means God is my salvation. Christ means my king, amen. Lord means my savior. He's my ruler. He's sovereignty. Is he Lord of your life? If he's not Lord right now, he'll be Lord sooner or later. It's time to get right with God. It's time to get right with God. I'm saying God is God. He's calling you today. Who was delivered for our offenses and raised to give for our justification. Not only was he delivered for my, my offenses, not only was he my substitute on the cross, he was raised again, amen, to make my, my work clean in the sight of God today, amen. I stand in the sight of God righteous, amen. I stand in the sight of God forgiven, amen. I stand in the sight of God as far as the east is from the west. That's how far he used to move my transgressions from me today. Hallelujah. That'll make a dead man shout. <laughs> Y'all better get some victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying, all the old failures, all the old sins I committed, all the lies I told, all the all the mess I got involved with, all the dope I smoked, all the dope I sold, amen, all that's on the blood, amen, because I went to the oak tree, amen. But Jesus, amen, didn't stop at the oak tree. I said he didn't stop at the oak tree. I said he's risen. Yes. Yes. Rose again for our justification. Yes. When Gideon received that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, at last, O oh Lord God. This is what we get. We're not just throwing scriptures at you. Angel of the Lord, he wasn't just an angel. He said, oh Lord, God. He's calling him God, amen. Why do you don't call the angels God, just a regular old angelic creature God? You call God God, amen. You call God God. You call God the Father God. You call God the Son God. You call God the Holy Ghost God, amen. He called the angel of the Lord. He called Jesus God, amen. He said, oh Lord God. Oh Lord God. He's here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord God, but because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, come on. The Lord said unto him, Peace be unto you, fear not, thou shalt not die. That, that old concept back then was they thought when they saw the face of God or saw an angelic creature, they would die. 
He ain't gonna die, amen. Yeah. You see God in this service. You see him moving your life, amen. Yeah. He ain't trying to send you to hell, amen. He's trying to take you to heaven, amen. Don't let the devil sit yeah. here and trick you out of your salvation, yeah. amen. Or keep you back from serving God. Or keep you not from serving God. You let God, amen, be your God, amen. You let God draw you, amen, with his love, amen. It's something about the real love of God that freaks people out. We're not a bunch of fanatics, but just a bunch of people that are close to God. A bunch of folks that are pressed in. A bunch of folks that have seen God face to face. Come on. We've seen God moving our lives. Yeah. yeah. We've seen the power of God. Yeah. And Gideon built there an altar unto the Lord mm. and called it Jehovah Shalom. Mm. To this day, it is yet an offer of the Israelites until the time of this writing. When this writing, when this book was written, the altar was still there. Mm. This loses a lot of people, right? This separates the folks that's going to get something from God. And people like, oh, they're going to walk out the same. Mm. He built an altar. I don't know what it is, man. But a modern day church where people don't want to come to the altar. Mm -hmm. it's, it grieves you because you know the power. You know what God can do when people surrender, when they give it all up, when they just forget about like, if you're involved in sin or you just may want to give God a Thanksgiving offering. Mm -hmm. But when you just present your body, we're talking about this last night, when you just give yourself to God, when you walk out on faith, amen, you come down to the faith zone, begin to build that altar, amen, you'll have peace, amen. He said, Jehovah Shalom, amen. God is peace is what he's saying, amen. Shalom, amen. You can't get peace in your life, amen, because you're having surrender in every area. Build that altar with God. Walk out of this thing with peace in your life tonight. You gotta do it. Amen. There's something wrong, man. There'll be something wrong. My salvation. If I didn't come down to, if you ain't see me down at the altar, or if I ain't see myself not trying to spend pressure, I was just saying, folks, we have to get in that place, amen. Well, we just come down. When we walk out, amen. When we give a sacrifice to God, not just finances, our life. Oh. Our lives have to be sanctified to God, set aside for God too. <laughs> our time. We're talking about that last night, right? Our time has to be sanctified. Our finances are sanctified. You pay your time. That's money sanctified to God. It's for God's use. Your life should be set aside for God. You should have time in your day where you give it to God. Devotion time. Amen. Amen. We give it to God. Every day. He's still calling people to holiness. We're living in an unclean, unholy society. Mm. But as we're called, he tells us to be sanctified. Be children of God. Jesus said this, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Who's he praying to? God the Father. He says, I pray not that thou should not take, take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. Mm -hmm. Folks, if the Christian church is out of the world, can you imagine how wicked society wow. would be? Oh, you think it's bad now? Right. If there was no light, everybody would be walking in the dark. You ever try to walk around the house in the dark? Yeah. The darkness? It's hard to get around. Amen. All my toes would be messed up. Don't you hate when you stub your toe and get some? Well, that make your whole body know it hurt. <laughs> Honey, can you rub it, please? <laughs> Thank God for good one. Amen. But he said this. God, I want you to keep them in the world. Just so they can be a light, so they can be a witness. Yeah. But keep them from evil. Yeah. God can keep you in an unholy, unclean society. And you can still live like a Christian. Amen. Now, you may not believe Amen. this. You can live like a Christian outside of church. Amen. Amen. When the brothers and sisters ain't around. Come on. At work. When they talking about women like dogs. I was telling them, telling them about that last night. Oh. Well, like I got to say, they won't laugh at the dirty jokes no more. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, if I found that flesh laughing, I would still not do it. Amen. Make myself, no, don't do it. I'll make you look, in, uh, look uncomfortable. Because God ain't laughing at that. No. They funny to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. How can you be set aside if you don't read the Bible? Right. You need the truth. The only way we can be set aside and away from evil, amen, is if we spend time in the truth. The truth is what sanctifies us in this world. He said in Psalms 119, I shall young man cleanse his ways. He had to take heed to the word of God. Not take heed to Playboy. Not take heed to the, 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 the pornos. Not to take heed to all these other things, amen. The dirty music, the dirty movies, amen. He has to take heed to the word of God today. That's the only way you can be clean in a society, amen, that's unholy. 
We need the word of God in our life. David said this. He said, I hid thy word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Amen. The reason people go into sin because they put God on the shelf. Get God off the shelf today. Amen. Get God in the inside today. Amen. Let God sanctify you through his truth today. Glory to God. Yes. Yes. Thou hast sent me into the world. Even so, have I sent them into the world. We're an evangelical church, amen. We don't just preach this, amen. We endeavor to live it, amen. Every word, amen. He said he sent us into the world, amen. The reason you're saved, amen, if you're saved, amen. God didn't take you to heaven just yet, so you need to be a witness, amen. You should be, your life should be a testimony, amen. Your life should be like a Bible, amen, to them believe, amen. Your life should convict, amen. Your life should draw people, amen, to Jesus, amen. Not to find fault, but to say, hey, Jesus loves you. He came to save, see, uh, save and to seek that which was lost. He tells us that our Heavenly Father will keep us from evil, mm -hmm. from sin, from wickedness. Those things that have us bound. Peter said this as the musician begins to come. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance. Mm -hmm. Don't conform yourself to what you just done before you got saved. Mm -hmm. Come on. Don't dress, amen, your mind with things you just done before you got saved. He said don't fashion. Don't fashion yourselves according to the form of lust, the desires. Yeah. That were not right. Mm -hmm. That were not of God. Mm -hmm. If you're going through a battle, you need to cast it on God. Right. Don't entertain sin in your mind and then wonder why you end up sinning when you do it. I don't know what happened when you had thought about it. Maybe about three or four months before you actually did it. Never prayed about it. Never gave it to God. Wow. And people wonder why. Like all these things are happening. You have to learn how to pray. You got to give God a Santa Claus. Let's God hurry up and get this. Amen. You're my book. God ain't no bubba. No. He's God. Right. He's sovereign. He's all powerful. Now he loves his kids. He wants to do things for you. Hello. He wants you to be real. Yeah. Oh, son. Hey, son. Everybody gets attention on you. Right. We done? Praise God. God is calling. Yes, he is. To be a Christian, to be Christ like. A Christian is supposed to be a light of the world, not. He says, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. In every department of your life, you need to be holy at work, home, church, in all manner of conversation. Are you holy in every department today? He says, because it is great, be ye holy, for I am holy. God calls. It's our duty to respond. He has not called you to uncleanness. He's called you to holiness today. He's called you to Calvary. He's saying, go to the oak tree. Put that thing under the oak tree. Make an altar. I'll give you peace. I'll call you to holiness. I'll help you live the sanctified life. As you begin to grow and develop, I'll teach you how to get the victory over those things that had you bound. Therefore, now there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I don't want you to pay attention to something real quick. I was talking about this verse last night. You read a modern day version, you won't even see who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It just says, there is now therefore no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. That's simply not true. The only way there's no guilt is if you walk after the spirit. You can't walk and do whatever you want to do anymore. You just, you, there's no point in even going. He's not your Lord then. Lord means absolute ruler. He says he walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The reason people have guilt because they're not walking after the spirit of God. They're walking after their own desires, what they want to do. God, I want to do this. I really want to do it. Well, what does God want for your life? Oh. See, it's really walking after the spirit that sets us free. You want to be free today? You can't walk out of the Spirit of God. You know what God has dealt with you a lot. Why don't we stand? Go before the Lord in prayer. He said he got a seed in great and precious promises. That you might be partakers of his divine nature. This is what he tells us. He wants you to be a partaker of his divine nature. I know. His holy nature. He loves you.